All the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. All the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And Lord Jesus Christ is coming so very, very soon. And this is the Bride of Christ here. The title of this artwork is Sword of the Spirit, and it's by Kevron 2001. In this picture, you got a nice gentleman here carrying a Bible, and coming out of the Bible is looks like a spiritual warrior carrying a sword. And it looks like it's a beautiful sunrise coming up in this city. Now, when you look at this artwork, what it makes you think? Hmm. It makes you think that there's a warrior in the Bible, and there is. Um, I'm just going to read something to you. Just give me a second to bring it up. Lord Jesus, you are my shield, my buckler, and my rear guard. I take opportunity to assume the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt, belt of truth. I put on the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. I take up the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The garments of vengeance, the cloak of zeal. I will not be afraid of the terror by night, neither of the arrow that flies by day, neither of the pestilence that walks in darkness, neither of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Noon Lord Jesus Christ, one name, amen, amen. This is just a little uh, insert of one of my prayers. And uh, the word, you should read the word of God every day, which is the sword of the spirit, God's holy word. You should read it every day because it gives you strength against the enemy. Your enemy is Lucifer, the fallen angels, and demons and a, and a Nephilim. Nephilim, which are the fallen, the children from the angels and women. Nephilim are, ba are basically demons, because demons are the disemboweled spirits of the Nephilim. I've also realized and learned another thing, that um, the creatures that were created by the fallen angels, the genetically modified creatures, also had demo demonically spirits, and they're running around as well. Um, one of them is also known as Bigfoot, or Sasquatch. It's a demonic spirit. Don't go out hunting for it, and don't don't go out looking for it. It is a demonic spirit. Um, it's a demonic spirit of some type of demonic creature that was created by the fallen angels back before the flood. It was destroyed and killed by the flood. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's why you should armor yourself up. Put on the armor of God, as I read earlier, every day, and read God's holy word every day. And uh, also, if you know the uh, a book the, one of the books from the Apocrypha, if you know 100% it's God's holy word, that also is counted as God's holy word. So the book of Jasher and the book of Enoch, I believe with all my heart and soul, are books that are holy word inspired books. I do not know about the rest of the, the Apocrypha as of yet. God hasn't revealed it to me. He has revealed to me that the book of Jubilees is not. It's a very, very old book, but it is not God's inspired word. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But read God's holy word every day to prepare yourself to defend yourself against the wiles of the devil, who is the hater of all good. Because if you don't know God's holy word, you can be easily tripped up into believing lies. Which is one of the reasons why a lot of people took the mark of the beast because they don't know God's holy word. They didn't pray about it and seek the Lord before they took it. They just went over and took it without even thinking, without even consulting Lord Jesus Christ in prayer, without consulting God, without seeking God's holy word and for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's why God said many, many people perish for lack of knowledge because they don't know God's holy word. They don't know who Jesus is. And, uh, it's very, very sad. A lot of people believe that they just go to church and listen to their pastor, priest, priest, preacher, or priest, or whoever they're listening to behind that pulpit, uh, and they just listen to whatever they say, and they never go out and seek it on their own. But there are so many people like that. I met someone who, most of their lives, they trusted in their the preacher, to a point where the preacher became 
God, which is to know. Even Charles Lawson told his congregation not to trust every word he says, but to seek it out and walk with the Lord. For the, having a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ should be exclusive between you and Lord Jesus Christ. Not between you and Pastor John and then Lord Jesus Christ. No. You need to have an exclusive relationship between the two of you. So Mary and Lord Jesus Christ need to have an exclusive relationship. We have, you have a young girl who's 20 years old named Mary. She needs to have an exclusive relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Mary should not be going to Pastor John and seeking him to find Lord Jesus Christ. Or seeking... Or Mary should not be going through her boyfriend, Kevin, and seeking him through divine Lord Jesus Christ. You shouldn't be seeking going to anybody, any human being, no matter who they are, to find Lord Jesus Christ. No. You go to God himself in prayer and supplication, and then you can find Lord Jesus Christ. You cry out to him with, with a humble and contrite heart and turn to him. You know, pr pray before you read God's holy word and ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and turn to him first and foremost, and he'll help you, he'll guide you, and he will be with you. He will never abandon you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Don't don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to people. And if there are preachers out there that are telling you you can't read this or that, and there are out there, I met one who said that you can't read anything outside the, the Holy Bible, the King James Version of the Holy Bible, or the New International Version. You can't read the Apocrypha. It's no, they're not God. No, you can't read it. And that is just sad. And and going over and pointing out that Enoch and Jasher and, and they're just, you know, shouldn't be read nor more, much less any of the other Apocrypha. And I pointed out to, to this pastor, and he had no answer for it, uh, was that what about the Ethiopian Bible? It has 88 books. The King James only has 66 books. The Catholic, which I'm not for Catholic, I'm not for the Catholic Church, but the Catholic book has like way more than the King James. Um, I think it has like, I don't know, 70 something books. I know it has um, Judith and has 1st, 2nd, 3rd Maccabees in, in it, which the King James does not have. And it has 1st and 2nd Esdras in it. Uh, there are some King James that have Esdras in it. I think it's the really old models of the King James. I have a King James version of the Holy Bible that was written in the 70s. God had blessed me with it. I found it at a thrift store and I got it only for a dollar. And it was truly a blessing from Lord Jesus Christ. All glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. All glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Again, with the Ethiopian Bible, the Book of Jubilees is in there, which for whatever reason it just doesn't seem to line up with regular scripture. But take it all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Uh, I've always wanted the Ethiopian Bible, but God has never blessed me with it. Uh, I was always way out of my price range if I did find it online when I did searches. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and seek him always. Seek him always. And... Always read God's Holy Word and always pray continually as much as you possibly can and turn to the Lord. We're in perilous times right now. The enemy is attacking all over the place. And um, it's it, times are really hard, I will admit. They're very hard. Just this week, I had to deal with spiritual warfare myself. And it's it's no fun. If you could pray for me, that would be wonderful. Um, for only those that have not taken the mark of the beast. For those who have, they've chosen to take it. It is in God's holy word. You need to decipher it with the Holy Spirit. Deciphering, ask the Holy Spirit to help you decipher it and break it down with the Holy Spirit leading you. Those who have taken the, the mark, they are no longer redeemable. Yahweh has been removed from their DNA. And their little lantern, this is not New Age, a little lantern with the Holy Spirit sat was snuffed out. And how great is that darkness? It just it does no longer flies to them other than the fact they're going to the lake of fire and to be burned for all eternity. Other than God's judgments, that's the only thing that applies to them and God's holy word. Uh, but take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. 
I will tell you it's very hard to come to terms to know that those you love and care about are no longer redeemable. You can't pray for them anymore. It's very hard. I've I've lost so many people because of it. And uh, I learned that worshiping and praying with them just gives me demonic attacks. And so I had to stop and uh, and listen to Lord Jesus Christ in the, way, in the way he was leading me away from these people. Um, if I take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, it is not me condemning you because God's holy word is condemning you. I remember I have I remember this this image that um, that was that was placed in my head of, of Jesus holding the you know the magic ocean potion in his hand and, and being really very really ang angry and saying and saying like do you want this and knowing that if you took it you would have had the wrath of God on you. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, understanding and for those that are born to parents who took it, they're no longer redeemable. They're basically like the Nephilim. Those who have taken it are the new Nephilim and so are their children. Take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Time is very, very short and you need to put on the sword of the spirit every day because there are enemies everywhere. The veil is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And soon the three days of darkness is coming. And uh, when the three days of darkness are coming, for those that are true children of God, um, it goes by where you stand. Uh, in God, some, some people will not even see the three days of darkness. Uh, they will be taken out six hours prior to it, as Lord Jesus Christ has revealed. But for those that are, are left behind, which is the... Um, the second half of the um, of the Bride of Christ and the, and the multitude to a large number. Those that hadn't accepted Lord Jesus Christ are safe here yet or are, are going to be coming to Lord Jesus Christ during the, the harder judgments and those that are like, they are lukewarm Christians. All of them are going to have to go through the three days of darkness. Now it goes by where you stand on your walk. That during the three days of darkness uh, going by where you're at, I would stay in your home. I would not leave your home. Do not unlock the door for anybody because you don't want to let demonic spirits coming in because during the three days of darkness is when the veil is going to be opened and Lucifer and the fallen angels, demons, Aor, and Nephilim are going to be loose and they're going to be everywhere. Um, pull your blinds down. Don't look outside because if you're looked outside, you 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 know you'll be tempted by those demons, and you don't want to have them have any effect on you. Don't look outside. Don't open your door, even if you're a farmer and you have cows. Um, leave your cows, your horses, your pigs, your donkeys, your chickens, your goats, your sheep. Leave them all in God's hands. God will take care of them and protect them. You don't need to go run out the door and go. To Go take care of them. Because as soon as you open that door, you're going to be laying demonic spirits into your house. And uh, you're going to be completely engulfed and attacked by them. So don't open the door. Bolt, bolt your front door, side door, and every other door you have in your house shut. Put the blinds down in your windows and stay in your home. And seek the Lord for what you should do. Those that are true children of God, there's going to be lights in their home. They'll be fine. Put on the sword of the Spirit. Read your God's holy word and stay in prayer. And trust that God will take care of your animals that live outside. Don't worry about them. Don't give in to fear and don't worry about them. God will take care of them. He'll have a legion of warrior angels down there. And he'll be guarding and taking care of your flock of sheep. Your cows, your chickens, your donkeys, your pony. All of it will be taken care of. Trust God. Which was one of the things I was like wondering about for myself. I have, you know, I, I live in a rural area and I live on a lot of farms and a lot of farm animals, and I have farm animals myself um, that I live with. And uh, what will become of them? And I realized that just leave them in Jesus' hands. If, 
and but Jesus take care of them. So, and once the three days of darkness um, is over, uh, everything's going to be down, and you're going to have to trust in the Lord. Things are going to happen rapidly from that period on. Um, the one world money system is going to get set up, and only those who can get the one world money system, which is a digital currency, is, is going to be those that took the mark of the beast. And those that are marked, they're going to be under complete control of the um, supercomputers. I think they're called quantum computers. And under complete control, they're going to be basically zombies. There's probably a reason why they had um, prepare of a zombie preparedness and everything. Hmm. And why zombies were pushed in main mainstream, um, in mainstream for a long time. Uh, I can remember, you know, zombies being pushed and in movies and in anime and all kinds of things since uh, um, I was a child. I think the last one I watched I was in a high school and I think it was called High School of the Dead or something and it was uh, about uh, a bunch of high school kids surviving the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I would not advertise you watching that at all. It's disgusting, demonic, and um, it's full of, um, it's just, it's just downright disgusting and has all kinds of disgusting things in it and disgusting imagery. Um, and they don't draw, the, I, I thought I saw that myself as a 17, 18 year old, that the women were drawn in purportedly. <laughs> it bothered me very much that they, they, they emphasized like, um, a certain body parts on a woman that shouldn't be emphasized to that point. Um, which was all disgusting. It's just trash. Um, which is one of the reasons what bothered me about it. And the older I got, the more I disliked and disliked things like that. To a point where I couldn't stand it anymore and I wanted nothing to do with it anymore. Because it was just, to me, it was just trash. I mean, if you have anything to do with anime, um, ask God to help you let go, repent of it. Repent for it, turn away from it, and throw it out. Get rid of it. it. It's just entry way for demons to get into your life. All anime is disgusting and trash. It's not worth it. No matter if it's Vocaloid or if it's just regular anime, uh, it's all just an occult. It's demonic, especially uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is really demonic. Um, uh, it has to do with all kinds of occult. It's disgusting. It's dirty trash. Throw it out and get rid of it. That was the first thing when God had revealed to me um, what was... In just, it was, you know, dirtbag trash, was I had the collection of Yu-Gi-Oh! Millennium items. I had the whole entire set of Yu-Gi-Oh! Millennium items. I don't even ask you to book them up. They're disgusting trash. Um, and I knew instantly that there was, like, dirtbag demon things coming out of them. They were the first thing to go along with a bunch of my Yu-Gi-Oh! blankets, and as time went on, more and more of them went. Um, get rid of all of it. Even my mannequin was considered um, dirtbag trash as well. Now I can understand if you're a seamstress having a mannequin to design clothes onto, um, but I think it was because my mannequin was so totally intertwined with anime because I dressed her up as a giant Barbie doll and cut it for cosplay and everything else that it was so intertwined with what God wanted to go on along with everything else. Um, but if you do have like a mannequin and you are a seamstress and used to make clothing, that's a whole different ball game. Uh, but take it all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I think the mannequins that God prefers us to use are the ones that have like no arms and all that, and, you know, the ones that are like a skeleton thing, like with just the uh, chest and the uh, like bottom of the hips, because they're basic. They're like the baseline for designing clothing on. But like the ones that have faces and all that. Not so much, but take it all up to the Lord in prayer. He had me get rid of mine. Um, and I wasn't using it to make clothing. I was just using it as a giant Barbie doll. And uh, I had her dress up as different anime characters. Including um, also doing uh, anime characters like uh, doing a female version of Sokaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, understanding and seek him with all your heart and soul and uh, 
also like have, have a like write diary journals and things. J Jesus Christ and Barnum is a way to you know f to get problems off your heart. Like like if you have like something that happened to you when you were a child, either you can talk it out with Jesus, you know, talk out the problems with him face to face. But if you live in a place where you have you have a lot of roommates and things that you don't have a place where it's private that you can go that you can sit there and talk to Jesus about. Like say you live in a uh, apartment and, and uh, you don't own a car and you live in an apartment in the city and you have like five roommates. You can, uh, if when you have, have write, like, we'll write a little diary entries and stuff to Jesus Christ or talk to him in your head. How, you know, tell him about like, um, you know, the pain and suffering that you went through and, and dig deep into your heart so that the things of your past can, um, can come to fruition and you can give them to Jesus Christ. So like say you have this girl named Hannah who was, um, badly abused when she was five years old. When she's now 20, Hannah's now 20, now she goes to Jesus and she talk, you know, talks to him and, and, and hands him the, what happened to her when she was five years old at the hand of her uncle Festus. And um, everything gets handed over. And, you know, go through it all and let go of all those things. And do searches on how to, um, you know, from, you know, do renunciations and and let go of demons. Below I'll put a link to a video about how to do heart healing and deliverance which is what I'm talking about because you want to get your heart completely healed. Every single person on this earth has a shattered heart and because of the traumas through life um, just a friend's betrayal shatters your heart. There's all kinds of different types of abuses that shatters somebody's heart and for the only way for you to go outside of time with Jesus Christ is if your heart is completely healed because if you still have unforgiveness in your heart against your Uncle Festus or you still have unforgiveness against somebody else and you're still holding anger about something that happened to you when you were two years old all these things they can they hold you down and they hold you captive I should know this I've gone through heart healing deliverance and I continue to seek Jesus Christ in heart healing and deliverance because of the emotional things in my life. Like I was talking to him about um, one of my uh, bosses at work and how I feel like I feel like I'm, I'm worthless to this boss and that I have no value to this person and and how I feel like because uh, you know all my feelings I'm not going to go in detail about it but here but all my all my feelings and everything about it I went in and I talked about it with Jesus Christ and I handed it all over to him. And it's so freeing. You feel so much peace when you give over your problems to Jesus instead of holding on to him because it just builds and builds and builds. And then it starts to fester and then it causes anger, problems. That's why there's a lot of people that are older, they're up there in age. They're very angry and miserable people because they hold it on to resentment and anger against people people from their past, they, their heart shattered and there's fragments in their heart full of anger and and emotional brokenness and everything against people in their lives that had betrayed them even all the way back to infancy. That it doesn't leave them, it just it hangs around and doesn't let go and festers and it causes all kinds of problems. It causes health problems. It causes all kinds of things. And the same thing with unrepentant sin. If you don't repent for your sins um, it's going to fester and it's going to and there's going to be consequences for it like I know somebody who's not around anymore and uh, I'll give him the the nickname uh, John so there was this guy named John he committed um, he committed adultery he was married but he committed adultery because he was with, he slept around with prostitutes and he never repented of it. He never turned away from it. And then when he got old, he got testicular cancer. And it was really, really, really bad, the cancer. And no matter prayers or anything did anything about it because he never repented for his sins for what he did. He never turned away from them. He continued to commit more sins until a point where he couldn't commit any more sins of of adultery anymore even if they had been until finally at the end he was doing videos talking about um, things that he shouldn't be talking about they were all sinful 
um, that had all relations to the, the, the sin that he liked to commit, that he was completely in bondage to, that he would not let go of. And finally, he had perished. It was between him and Lord Jesus Christ where he went, but that is very, very sad. And uh, God, when you commit sin and you don't repent from it, and you get the wrath of God on you, God will bring the punishment that fits the sin. Remember that. I'm just on a little ramble here right now. <laughs> but, like, if you um, can commit uh, sin with your, your, your private parts over and over and over again, well, God will put a will bring punishment upon that. That's why there are certain things running around um, that are running around because of that punishment. Because God wants you, wants only man and women to cleave to each other. A man should marry his wife and cleave to his wife. Not to not to go over and commit um, fornication or adultery and all that because it is a sin. And uh, that's just naming one sin. That, you know, one type of sin that's out there. There are many sins, and uh, there will be consequences for them. If you do not repent for them and turn them away from them, God will bring um, pain and suffering upon you. If you don't repent for them and turn away from them, and with all your heart and soul, and above Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and soul. So if you accept Lord Jesus Christ and realize you did wrong, and you repent and cry out to Jesus and ask him forgiveness, he will forgive you, and you'll be forgiven, and then you don't do it again. Turn away from it and do not commit it again. If you feel tempted, cry out to Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you continue to redo the sin and then repent for it and then don't just do it again the next hour, you're misusing grace and that's wrong. But take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And uh, time is very, very short. We don't know how much time we have left here maybe a month, I don't know. Um, things are happening rapidly. Uh, I think we've had at least 78 train derailments so far in the United States alone. I've heard of ones happening in like New Zealand and, and India and Africa, the different nations of Africa. Um, I think one happened maybe in Nigeria a couple of months ago. But yeah, and there's all these storms and everything happening, earthquakes. I mean, that was a pretty severe earthquake that happened in Alaska. But uh, keep looking up, and um, your redemption draws nigh. And no matter what happens, stick close to Lord Jesus Christ, because time is short.